We're back in the lab with another box that Lenovo's shipped. They've been raining boxes upon the lab this week, which is not a problem for sure. Now, earlier this week, we had the little tiny Nano IoT Edge device, and that's a great little PC that we're working on. This, of course, is a server. This is their 1U Single Proc AMD SR635. Now, the 635 and the 655 were launched in August of last year as AMD refreshed their Epic chips. Now, this one has got, as you can see, eight SAS bays across the front with two available right here. Now, Lenovo ships this from a storage perspective in a number of different ways. This can be all NVMe across the front. You could do four three and a half inch hard drives if you're so inclined. And uh, they've also got bays in the back that we'll take a look at and bays inside that are available. That means this system can have 16 NVMe drives inside, which is really quite remarkable for a one use server. And while all those drives are available, there's still plenty of expansion via the OCP slot in the back and a half height, half length card. But before we get too far ahead, again, we've got eight SAS bays here, USB and monitor option in the front. Let's go ahead and spin this thing around to the back so you can see the connectivity options and expansion that this server offers. So we've spun the server around, just taking a quick look at the back. Now the things that jump out, of course, this little guy, this is the OCP slot that's got a, uh, a little MES card NIC in it. That's a 25 gig dual port card. As mentioned, we've got this half height on top. Now that'll let us put in something like a Mellanox Connect X6 if we want to get really fancy and drive some serious bandwidth through this server, which we do. If we look at the top, we've got two NVMe bays here, standard U.2 form factor. Across the bottom, your management, monitor, no display port, but uh, you know, your standard connection is there, serial and USB. Uh, we've got two hot swap power supplies, 1100 watt guys that come out. And this spot here where we've got the NVMe bays is actually a flexible unit. So we'll take a look at that as we pop the lid off. All right, so we took a quick look at the front. We took a quick look at the back. But the really exciting part from our perspective is what goes on inside. Lenovo does such an amazing job at designing the inside of the server that sometimes it gets overlooked. And we're not going to let that happen this time around. Now, the great thing about the way this one's designed and frankly, all of their servers is that it's really easy to access all of the components to make any sort of swaps or upgrades or changes that you want. And I talked about how this server is capable of 16 NVMe drives. We're going to come back to that. Let me start at the front here. This is, as we said, the SAS expansion uh, unit where we've got hard drives, which you know pains me a little bit to say, but there's still a time and a place for hard drives. We're not going to give them too much trouble. But if we took the drives out, these two little things pop out. We could disconnect this, drop in an NVMe front end, which would give us 10 bays on the front of two and a half inch NVMe, and then reroute the cabling. Really simple to do. And if we're lucky, we just might make that video in another couple weeks. As we come, continue to scroll back, Lenovo's got these great little fans. They pop out real nice and easy. There's seven of them, 28,000 uh, RPM fans that'll make sure to keep the cooling across the board, suck it in through the front to keep the NVMe drives uh, nice and cool. Pull off this cover. And now we can take a look at some of the additional components. Of course, we've got the AMD Epic CPU here. We've got uh, the RAM slots were half populated with 64 gig DIMMs, which gives us 512. On the board here, we've got the NVMe connectors, which we could use. This is the SAS card. Like I said, all these blue things just pop out really nice and easy. And let's see, this is a uh, dual M.2 boot device that pops out. This would hold a, uh, a battery backup for the RAID card if you so chose. Now, what's really neat is we could spin this and yank this unit. And when we were talking about 16 NVMe drives, this is where it comes in. This guy pops out, a chassis sits in right here that pops up and shows four more U.2 NVMe drives. Really cool. Um, yes, they're inside and you give up some serviceability, but if you want the density of 16 NVMe drives in a one use server, that's really great. What's even better is that all 16 of them are PCIe Gen 4 non-blocking, 
so you'll get all the capabilities of new next-gen SSDs in this server. That's, uh, that's quite remarkable. And the other thing we looked at at the back, we'll pop this guy out. Now this is the, the two NVMe expansion guy, but here we could see that you could put in a different riser that would give you additional card support on the back. Now we've got this guy here. This is like the, uh, the half height, half length, where we said we'll probably drop in a, a Mellanox card for higher throughput from the server. And then tucked in underneath is that uh, OCP uh, MES card uh, NIC expansion slot. Overall, it's a really great system, thought through from start to finish with so much flexibility. It's pretty remarkable to think you could go from four three and a half inch drives to 16 NVMe SSDs all within this same chassis. I think probably what we should do is put it back together, get the lid on, get it in the rack and fire it up and see what it's capable of. So we'll be back with more content around this, uh, but for now we're going to reassemble and get it to work. Thanks for tuning in.